Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. Hold on, Nicole. That's okay. No, no, no. Come on. Just go. Come on. <laughs> Come up over here. We're not allowing you to go. Just go. Who, who are you? I'm Nicole. Oh, it's Nicole. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Okay. So she didn't make the she didn't make the cut up here, but I got her to say hello to everybody out there. Thank you very much, everybody out there, for joining our digital family. We really appreciate it. We're our little three foot table. We extend our leaf that we don't have a leaf to, but we appreciate you guys sitting down and hanging out with us. We um, we value you guys. We value your comments. We value your companionship. We value other people that are seeking the same stuff that we are seeking, which is the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator, along with the King that will be returning someday, Messiah Yahushua, and what a day that will be, oh glory to Yah, hallelujah, when the King returns and is able to save us from all this madness that is going on until then. But until then, we need to seek the kingdom where it is found. We must look to our the kingdom. And how do we seek the kingdom, Kate? We open our Bibles and we read what's inside of it. We read the Torah. We read the prophets. We read the Yehoshua. We read the Gospels. Yeah, and so I got to thinking about this, I, and I think I've mentioned this before, but I think when the kingdom that comes, so when a big old city flies down on top of Mount Zion... I believe that all of these sacrifices may possibly be reinstated. Even though we have Messiah Yahushua, there is a contentment that Yah has, and I don't know why the sacrifices wouldn't be. So as we go through these laws, statutes, and commands, even though they do not apply to us today in our current living condition, it does not say that they are outdated for all of eternity. Because there may be Levi. I mean, when the when the tribes of when the twelve tribes come back and are gathered from across the four corners of the earth, that is when we may figure out who the Levites are and who the rest of it are, and we may have this kind of a setup there. And so, if we do have that kind of setup, then we absolutely need to know what this stuff says. So, with that, good morning to everybody. And I would like to go over something. Uh, it seems like a little controversial with our brother um, Eloy Eloy Garcia. Um, and this started yesterday or the day before. Um, our dear brother uh, Eloy Garcia. I, I think I'm saying it wrong. Maybe it's e Eloy. Um, but regardless, we appreciate everything that you guys have to say because it is it is very important. It is, it is stuff that we should all discuss and that we should all know. And so his original question was he wanted us to call out the people that practice hidden polygamy. And my answer to that was uh, there's no commandment at all that says anything about that. So he wrote back, and I would like to present this, and I would like to for us to talk about it. He goes, thank you all. And he goes, hmm. No. Abraham had Sarah. Hagar was the handmaid of Sarah. And given to Abraham only one time on purpose, but never a concubine. And Kethura was after Sarah's death. And again, no Jacob wanted only one wife and was deceived with Leah by her father. It is not, it is in fact not scriptural to have more than one wife. What happened to those kings who had many wives? And only because some had more wives doesn't mean it was legal according to Torah. Many sins are described, but he created us as man and woman, not man and woman. I don't know what man. he's talking not, it's, it's, it's... Man and woman. Oh, man and women. Okay, got it. Shalom. All right, so first and foremost, let's, let's discuss this. And I would like to take us into a little thing that I was looking at here. And when you look at the people who had multiple wives, um, without looking, you guys already, two of, two of my kids already cheated. Jaden, who, who do we know of that had multiple wives? Right out of the gate to begin with. Um, David. David. We know that Esau had multiple wives, right. but he was a bad child. Yeah, he was, he was a very bad child, and he should. But they said when you get married, and so he went off and married multiple wives. So we have Jacob, right? Okay, yep. And if we want to say that it was only a, a because he got tricked kind of a thing, um, okay, we'll go with that. So we have King David, right? And we also have a guy, Elkanah, in First Samuel. He had multiple wives. Oh, yeah, we, we get, that's uh, Hannah's. Husband. Hannah's husband. Was they all had children, and they were making fun of her that she didn't have children, so she would cry. Oh, right, 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 right. And she was right, one of the wives. So we also have King David. Now, when you look at King David, okay, this is a trivia question, because I don't know if you guys know this. How many wives did King David have? I think it was 22. It was like, I think 
30 or something. According to the Google, he had eight wives. Huh. Uh, David rules as the king of Israel until his death at age 70, prior to which he chooses Solomon. Um, okay, and then Solomon had a bunch of wives. Now, here's something that a lot of people did not know, and we do not know this, but Moshe also had two wives. And um, we can figure that out in numbers. And Moshe, um, let's, just, let's just read this right here. Um, scripture, scripture never lists Tharbas by name, and the closest evidence we have comes in Numbers 12, 1 through 10. And that's when Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moshe because of the Cushite wife, right? Mm. So he had a Cushite wife, uh, for he had married a Cushite. Now, some people have said that possibly, uh, is it Zipporah? Zipporah? Zipporah was possibly dead, but we do not know that. And so you can, there's a, a, an account, I think it's in Josephus, Josephus, um, where it talks about the woman that uh, fell in love with Moshe when she, he, he was invading the Ethiopians, or when this whole thing was. Basically, he, she fell in love. She sent out um, people to um, say, hey, I, I love you. And Moshe said something to the effect that if you allow the city to fall, I will marry you or something to the effect. She let the city fall. They got married as far as we know. So let's talk back about this. Now, I want to go back into this comment. So it says, Mr. Our friend Eloy Garcia says, um, it was legal according, doesn't mean that it was legal according to the Torah. Okay, why, why didn't... Uh... Scoot up, everyone. <clears throat> Why was David not punished by multiple wives? When he married Saul's daughter and then went and married another wife, why did Yahuwah not punish him? Why did he say, you were cursed now for all generations because you took an extra wife? And why... why about you, Jacob? If that was illegal, he would have said... Well, this, according to Eloy Garcia, that was a one-off. That was just, okay. a, just because he got tricked. But at the same time, if it was against the Torah, Yaakov would not have married her, right? If all of a sudden, he would have stuck with the one wife that he had. He would have had Leah. So he was not breaking Torah. He would have not broke Torah because he knew, he knew about the Torah, right? He was Isaac completely taught him about this. They were very well versed in the ways of Yah, and so if we are going to make up our own commandments, we can't do that, right? There is no commandment that says thou shalt only have one wife and no other. There was a command for kings though later, and I believe it's Numbers we get into where he says. You guys are going to raise up a king one day, so I'm going to set some rules up for the kings. And he says, don't take excess wives, don't take excess horses as kings, don't take excess riches and golds and silvers and things like that. And that's the only command we have for don't take excess wives. But excess wives could mean you have five and you take another 15, right? Yeah, I think Solomon might have broken that. Solomon don't, definitely broke it. And, and where, what he's talking about in the kings, what happened to the kings? Why? What happened to Solomon? Uh, he went astray because of all the women. He broke they, the Torah by taking excess wives. 700 is a little excess. Yeah, he, there's no way that he could have even probably known half of their names at this stage. I mean, he, there's too many of them. You would not, you would, you, at the first 100 or 200, like this was like some sort of a, uh, a trophy case for this guy or something of the sort, right? Um, this guy was, uh, he was a freaky, freaky fella, right? He, he should not be doing what he did. And they led him astray because by the time he got done with the kingdom, he was worshiping to other Elohim, which was incorrect, which is against the Torah. But back to our friend Eloy Garcia, you're going to say that Jacob broke Torah. Jacob broke Torah. You're going to say that David broke Torah. You're going to say, and we know that, that Solomon broke Torah, but it was for different reasons. So there is absolutely no command. And yes, Adam and Eve was man and woman, absolutely. But there was no, and there is no commandment in the Torah. So regardless of how you view a man and a woman, I don't, listen, I don't think it's a good idea. R listen, if you, if you are plotting on having multiple wives, from, from a married man's perspective and dealing with one woman and having a 20 some years of marriage with this one woman, I would say that you are probably, you're probably in some deep waters if you're trying to make that happen with two. And you're trying to, if you're in, it has to be done. You, you would absolutely have to be walking with Yah for this to ever work right. And your women would completely have to be in this. It was for a, probably for a different time but at the same time, there is no commandment against having multiple wives. So, my friend, uh, Mr. Garcia, 
I, there's no command. It's not against the Torah, right? And it, it, you may say right here, um, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not illegal. I mean, it's completely legal, um, or we would have heard about it. David would not be a man after Yah's own heart. Do you think if he's out there whoring himself out and has all these women, and that David would have been the kind of king that he was? This is, um, you know, he, he, he had eight wives. I mean, that may be an excess. It may not be an excess, but it's way, that's how times were. And so um, I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, tell everybody it's against the Torah to have more than one wife because it's absolutely not. So we'll end with that um, and we'll get on to this right now. And let me go over a couple of yesterday's commandments. And I'm not at the bottom of this, so I'm going to have to fly to the bottom of it. And so is there a way to do this fast, Eli? Mm -hmm. No, Sometimes. it's just a hunk of junk. Mm -hmm. And a scroll bar, I'll take this thing to school. All right, here we go. And we're almost there, everyone. Sorry, don't look. Give you headaches. All right, here we go. So where do we start yesterday? So we started around 84, right? All right, so here, we'll start with 83 right here. And I think this was from, yeah, Leviticus 19. We are in 20 today? 22. 20, 21. 20. Okay, so let's start at 83. Do not defile your temple. That's talking about yourself. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Ye shall stone the wizards and the mediums. Pick up the rocks, chuck them at them, and end the evil in the land is the way you would do this, right? Pick up the boy, pick up, pick up the wood, boys. We're gonna have a barbecue, and it's not going to be what something we eat. It's just gonna be we're gonna barbecue evil. Okay. Um, that's it. So let's get into this. I am gonna break out my handy dandy split screen. And we are going to get to work and see if we can find anything. And today is rules for priests, so I'm not so sure that we're going to actually find any commands. But uh, we're uh, we got a lot of commands going on here. What happened the and, handy dandy split screen? Uh, I don't know what happened to the handy dandy split screen. There it is. And the handy dandy split screen almost let us down. And this was the Numbers 12 that I was reading up about the Cushite wife. And, and Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moshe because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. And it makes sense because he was. Originally married to Zipporah, who was from Midian. Right. Who was a Midianite. Yeah, Midianite. You have Cushite and Midianite. All right, so let's get down with the lesson here, and we are 21. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good. Good. How are you guys doing out there? Everybody out there, just pretend that I can hear you go back. Whether it's good or bad, I would like to say many blessings to you. And if you're having a very bad day, here's a big grizzly bear hug to you, and um, yeah, hope your day goes better. So let's get on. 21. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall be none, there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people, but for his kin that is near unto him, that is, for his mother, and for his father, and for his son, and for his daughter, and for his brother. Okay, mine says except for his relatives. So right. So he can except for his relatives. So I believe what that's saying is. Priests weren't allowed to like become unclean, right? If it was like an uncle or a grandmother or something, they weren't allowed to go touch the corpse. They had to be clean so they can work in service of Yah. But if it was in their immediate family, which was the son or the son, the daughter, and the wife, something like that. Yeah, and so this is definitely how to stay clean. And for his sister, a virgin that is nigh unto him, which has had no man, for her may he be defiled. Okay, so I guess. So basically, if she had no husband. Yeah, if she had a husband, then, then he, the husband has to deal with it. Then, but yeah, right. But he's not allowed to basically deal with the dead. Yeah, that's very interesting. All right, four. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. All right, might say a leader does not defile himself among his people to profane himself. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Nicole, what you got? This one says he shall not even defile himself, being a bereaved husband, his wife not being his blood or kin, or being the chief man among his people, and so profane himself. Oh, he can't, do, he can't take care of his wife? No. Oh, wow. Mine doesn't say she's that. she's not blood. Where do you see that at, Nicole? Mine's on, it's just in the parentheses, so it kind of explained the verse a little um, bit more. And I be says it as well. It, where does it say that? It related to him by marriage. Yeah, and so to uh, related to him by marriage, and so I guess it's even his wife. That would be a tragedy. Wow, that'd be terrible. Wow. All right, so five. 
Uh, yeah, some of this stuff just leaves us speechless. We don't know what to say, like, other than Yah's ways or his ways. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. All right, don't be a beta. Don't chop your beard off. Um, that's a joke. But, uh, so I got, why would they not put baldness on their head? What, why, who would, who would shave your head for the dead? Um, the priests were, like, people, I guess that was their tradition was to shave their head, like, I guess they were Probably. Wars. Probably shaved all their hair off and like I guess it's a kind of a, a sackcloth on and being a remorse kind of ash thing. Ash over it. Put ash on your bald head. All right. They shall be holy unto their Elohim and not profane the name of their Elohim. For the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire and the bread of their Elohim they do offer. Therefore they shall be holy. This is very interesting the way Yah does this because, you know, this would be extreme. If my wife died, I would have an extremely hard time not touching the corpse. I mean, I, as creepy as that sounds, but I mean, I'm, I'm not, I would be the one that, that carried my wife wherever she would go, dead. Um, that would just be what I would do. And so this is a, if your wife dies and you're, a, you're in that kind of leadership position, that's, that's hardcore. But I guess the point is that we need to be even more cling to Yah, that even though we lost the love of our life or we have lost everything that we, <laughs> that everything that we hold valuable at that moment, um, we absolutely must not take our eyes off of Yah. And I, I guess that is a good, that is a good lesson for us today, right? Because, you know, life is not promised to us. You know, every single day we pray that we, we thank Yah that he has given us another day to breathe, um, another day to live, another day on this beautiful land that he has, he has provided for us. And um, it's his. It's his, our breath is his, our bodies are his, our souls are his. Every last beat of my heart, every last beat of your heart, you know, the snakes that have been not coming out to attack us all the time and that I believe he's protected us on, he is the one that is in charge of it. If, when our time is over, then that snake will come up out of the grass. And, you know, that's, that is Yah's will. Everything is Yah's will. So I have a question. Is the number four a command for us or for the priest? Uh, that'd be the priest. That'd be the priest. So... Yeah, and so this is a priest, and this is about you know getting being holy, getting into the, the the temple, and you know being being unclean for that time that you would be unclean. All right, they shall not take a woman that is a whore, or profane. Neither shall they take a woman put away from her man, for he is holy unto his Elohim. Okay, so th I mean I guess that's that's thing. I guess I, I don't know. I. I don't know what to say about that, right? So you, I guess you have an option of taking a, a woman who's a whore. Um, I feel like they were like, last time we were talking about it, they were like burned or something. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is where would the whores be in that land? I mean, if you saw a whore and somebody doing that, you would go take the, pick up the stones. And it might have been uh, when they were pillaging the places. You know, they all ended up taking wives later on in wars and stuff. They ended up with a bunch of women. Yeah, but who's going to want to take a whore? I don't know. I'll leave it to the Israelites, man. Leave it to the Israelites. We have to have these commands for a reason. Yeah, okay. All right, so anyway, he's not to take a, a whore. Um, Someone defiled. Yeah, or a woman that has been divorced from her man. So he's a, basically you would take a virgin woman. He actually says that. Um, okay. Um, you shall sanctify him, therefore, for he offers the bread of Elohim. He shall be holy unto you. For I, Yahuwah, which sanctify you, am holy. All right. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profanes her father. She shall be burnt with fire. How does somebody play a whore? What is that? Mine what? says if she profanes herself by whoring. Right. So how how would you how would you? What, what, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you guys you guys probably wouldn't know that. So I mean, it's it's basically one of those women with the looks in their eyes that you know you they're trouble. They're trouble everywhere they go, and their their job is to lure the man. In and there are women like that, and you know it's like. Uh, Talks about in proverbs. Yeah, proverbs. Women like that. Yeah, you got to be very, very careful. All right, and he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and that is consecrated to put on the garments, shall not uncover his head nor rent his clothes. Okay. Um, he's the high priest. What is that saying here? He says he does not unbind his head. What does that mean? Is this the high priest of somebody that died? Among his brothers, whose head, uh, the anointing oil was poured, or who was ordained to wear the garments, does not unbind his head or nor tear his garment. Yeah, I think so. I think it's if someone dies. Okay, so he must not let his hair become unkept. So basically, he doesn't. He can't become or a wreck. He the high priest. Let his head hang loose. 
let his head hang loose. Yeah, like, the hair of his head hang loose. Uh, so is it like so no long hair? So hair come down. Okay, the high priest, let's read this back, go back to NIV here. The high priest, the one among his brothers who has had the anointing oil pulled on, poured on his head and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments must not let his hair become unkept. Okay, so this isn't, this has nothing to do with uh, the, verse of above. the verses above. This has to do with a dude's hair. Yeah. All right, so, um, and what is this? in parentheses, though, says in mourning. Oh, in mourning. Yeah, I was thinking this baby might be in mourning for his daughter. Uh, or his wife. Maybe. I mean, does he wear his hat to bed? <laughs> Says you do not uncover your head. I don't. I don't know. You just don't let your hair hang loose or raise your clothes. Probably would have got caught in the fire, right? Probably. Like, I, I'm sure. I'm sure if your wife dies, you're gonna start looking like a wreck. Everybody. Everybody I've seen that's lost a spouse. They don't look good after a while. They look really bad, and they they you kind of the people that are unsh that that have nice shaved faces. They usually end up like. Like all like jacked up looking like the guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're like ah, oh, and then you just you look at them, you know. They, they don't take care kind of themselves. Not like the old drunks or something like that. Yeah, they don't like, take care of themselves. Yeah, and and that's that's easy to do when you lose the love of your life. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure. Other than this, is he shouldn't uncover his head, which I don't think is take your hat off. It's let his hair down. All right, so it's eleven. Neither shall he go into any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. So a high priest can't, a priest can, but the high priest cannot. Okay. High priest cannot, but the priest can. Okay. So, yeah, even if your, your mother or father died, you are not to touch the body if you're high priest. Neither shall he, he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his Elohim, for the crown of the anointing oil of his Elohim is upon him. I am Yahuwah. So that's a huge thing. I guess once you're sanctified, once you have the blood on your ear and your, your right uh, thumb and your toe... And you have the anointing oil on you. It's it's game on, right? Your 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 priest duties, regardless of who dies. All right, and he shall take a woman in her virginity, a widow or a divorced woman, or profane a harlot, or profane. That doesn't say profane harlot. I, I read that wrong. You wouldn't profane a harlot. That'd be horrible. A widow or a divorced woman, or profane, or a harlot. These shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to be his woman. Okay, I don't know what profane is. Probably just a... Mine says defiled. Defiled. Okay, so that's profane. Yeah, so... That's a big thing. And this is why I tell you guys, you guys, you know, I know that you guys are not outside in this world, but if you were outside in this world, um, you would absolutely want to stay holy in everything you do, right? Never, ever, ever, ever take your clothes off. Just keep your clothes on. Always. Okay. Neither shall he profane his seed among his people, for I, Yahuwah, do sanctify him. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aaron, saying, Whoever he be of your seed in their generations that has any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his Elohim. Mine says defect. Defect. So, I guess what is a defect? Is a zit a defect? I don't know. I think I Nicole like says a, no. It's a normally bo normal bodily function that you get a zit. I feel like a defect... It, it wouldn't, wouldn't it be a defect, though? Or maybe something like born without a foot. I don't know. It in the next one. Okay. Oh. Well, I would say, I mean, by the time you guys end up with like uh, zit faced and you have all these pimples and stuff like that, I, th I think you. Uh, I feel like we're unclean for a while. We need to like clean up, but uh, nothing like like where we can't like be priests. Well, it says defect. You got to be. You got to be careful. I don't know what that means, honestly. Read the next one. All right. Thanks, Nicole. For whatsoever man he be that has a blemish, he shall not approach. A blind man or a lame. Or he that has a flat nose, or anything superfluous. Mine says disfigured, or deformed. Flat nose. That feels like. What is that? <laughs> Mine says. A Are we looking like a guy with a pig nose? Like the Grinch or something? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like a pig. The guy looks like a pig. Stop. All right, hold on. He like. <laughs> come on, guys. Let's get it together. Like I Mine feel like. Mine says a blind man or a lame, or he who has a disfigured face, or a limb too long. Ah, oh, we're out of the game. We all look terrible. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> we all have disfigured faces. I feel like it wasn't like like a flat. I feel like that's just like super like specific. A flat, flat nose. nose. See, like the people that well, have like a, a cleft palate or something that type of thing. They probably would not. Well, be I don't, don't want to make any bad jokes, and I'm not anti-Semitic, but they always say the Jews have huge hooked noses. Well, they're not the Levites. Yeah. Pro <laughs> well, I mean, the whoever Jews. whoever this would had as a flat nose. Where did they come up with flat nose? It my, says my, that in the king. 
Mine, or he that hath a flat nose. Mine is a disfigured early form. Yeah, Mike. maybe the guy's been in a fight, dude. Too many fights, and his nose is like all jacked up. A flat nose. I wouldn't even know what that is. Did I say anything about nose in the NIV? It's like this. I don't know. Like, let's hope the man can breathe if he has a flat nose. Okay. <laughs> Half the people cracking up. I'm trying not to make jokes. I just don't know what the flat nose is. Okay, 19. Or a man that is broken-footed or broken-handed. So uh, if you break your foot or break your hand, you're not coming before the temple. Yeah, don't do that. Or crooked back. Or hunchback. a dwarf. Yeah, hunchback. Or a dwarf. Or that has blemish in his eye. Or be scurvy. Or scabbed. Or has stones broken. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, All right, mine, says, mine says is a eunuch. Is a eunuch. Okay, his stones are broken. I don't know Except if we're going to make it through man. this one. Yeah, his, his stones are broken. The stones aren't broken, they're gone. <laughs> if he's a eunuch, right? Okay, so let's continue what on. What is really going on in this effort? All right, everybody settle down. Okay, so if you're, you're crooked back, you, you like just <clears throat> have to, sometimes you got to punch them to get them back into order here. Okay, so if you have scurry or scab. Okay, let's talk about the scab real quick. So uh, it, I feel like scab is like a twenty says or or <laughs> who has a festering or running sores or damaged testicles. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm so what is sorry. That? What version is that? That's an IV that says that. What? So <laughs> so ones are stones. So is are a, uni a eunuch because a eunuch is like no stones. Yeah, exactly. And we don't mean to be like explicit vulgar. We're not trying here. to be. We're not trying it's to just, be vulgar. We're trying to figure out what this really is. Okay, so I'm um, the scab. Okay, is it a festering, a festering sore? What are we talking about? Are we talking about a zit? You know, I don't know. If you is can't that a, yourself? Go walk off for a second. Is okay. that a is that a scat? Is a, a zit a festering sore? Well, it's a scab for sure. If you pick your zit and pop it up, you're gonna have a scab. Um, yeah, that's true. They so don't. They I, didn't what, have what happens about like an had. ear pimple or something? You you pick it out. You have a little tiny scab inside. You're, it's the same thing. Why if you had a little zit and you didn't realize you picked it up and popped it? You didn't realize you had it and you like and you didn't know you had you it. Would, you would probably be inspected by other people. Mine says scabs or skin trouble. Skin trouble. Definitely is it. Yeah, it's that's, skin trouble. yeah, that's a skin trouble. That hurts. So okay. you're not allowed so to come I, near that if yeah, you're I, I think up. if you have a zit, I think uh, the teenagers probably shouldn't be in the temple. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, they're probably not smart. They probably don't have the experience and not intelligent enough not to do something like bring strange fire or something. They would probably somehow mess that up. They had to be over 20 right. to be a priest. Oh, they did? Yeah, it said that in a couple chapters back. Oh, okay. Thank you, Nicole. All right. No man that has a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest, shall come nigh to offer the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire. He has a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his Elohim. Okay, no blemishes. Don't. Nothing. That says who has a defect. Defect, blemish. It's, Same thing. You got a zit. I mean, if you got any anything you have wrong with you, or you cut yourself the day before and you have a scab... I don't think you can go. I don't think if you... Send somebody else. Yeah, and you know, that's going to be crazy because those guys are using knives all the time. So they're probably going to end up cutting themselves at some point um, just because that happens when I mean, you're playing around It's a good thing knives. the whole tribe of them. Yeah, good thing is there's tons of them. That's why. I didn't realize until we started going through all of this why they needed so many Levites. I'm like, man, there's just too many people. And now you get it that there were so many tasks that these guys had to do. All right, 22. He shall eat the bread of the Elohim. Both of the holy, most holy, and of the holy. Only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he has a blemish, that he profane not my sanctuaries, for I, Yahuwah, do sanctify them. Okay, so this is a little bit different here. This is saying that he is, he is able to do some duties, right? He's able to do some things, but he can't bring the bread. I don't even go behind he the veil. He can't get near the veil. He can't get behind the veil. He can't offer the show red. But you're still able to go in that, the... A temple or like a little tent thing um, with a blemish, right? Because mm -hmm. he has a blemish, right? So you're still able to do some kind of stuff. So I, I don't... For whoever has a blemish, he shall not approach. Uh, whoever has a blemish shall not approach to offer the bread of his Elohim. Okay, so we don't offer the bread of the Elohim, which must have been behind the veil. Is that behind the veil? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mine says near the altar of incense. You know, the altar of incense, that was before the veil, wasn't it? That was the altar of incense. Wasn't that, wasn't that where... Uh, it's that little square, too. It's like yeah. it's a little square thing. Before it. Right. right, before the veil. Yeah. All right. So, I don't know. We kind of got some specifics off on here. We'll probably have to get a lesson from El Moshe and El Aaron one day to get this right. All right. 24. And Moshe told it unto El, to El Aaron and to his sons and unto all the children of Yashrael. 
All right, gentlemen, that is a lot to take in on this. Um, not a tremendous amount to take in, but it is some good stuff. And I would hope and I would pray that at some point you guys will become the Levitical priests. Well, you know, what greater honor would you have? I mean, if you guys were to pick a tribe, where would you guys go at this point? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I have experience cutting up a lot of animals and... So I could definitely fit in the Levites, but as for like, that's kind of a big. Is that honor. what you would like to do every day? I don't know. I, I feel don't... like I'd rather be like uh, the warrior class of things. Yahuda. Like, yeah, somewhere around there. The Marines. The Marines yeah, of Yisrael are Yahuda. Something of that degree. I don't think I'd be good in the Levites. Who wants to be part of Benjamin? Did I, Benjamin? I, they are a curse and end up like no one gives them wives. Like yeah, but, but they, got, they didn't they want got the tribe to die off. This is another story for another time, but. Uh, they ended up doing a whole bunch of great sins. And they're like, well, we can't exactly kill off the tribe, so we'll put a bunch of women out and then grab the women and we'll turn the eye, we'll turn our eyes and they can have their wives and we'll walk away and we'll leave them alone. Yeah, very strange times. <laughs> very, very interesting. I think that was Judges or the end of Joshua. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. You know, the people of Yah, are, they, they got some issues, right? And so if we, if you guys out there have these kind of issues, and they're not going to be like this kind of issues, but we all have issues. There's a lot of issues, right? And, um... We got to keep trying is the bottom line. You know, we, we can, we can, we got to stay cling. We got to stay holy in everything that we do. And it is about us learning this stuff. It is about us coming closer to our creator so that we are able to seek his heart by knowing this stuff and knowing the will of our creator in, in, a, in the kingdom to come. If we're all out there, you know, just dusting off the side of the pillars or something and a witch comes in and goes, ha, 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 we'd look at the witch and we take her outside the, the, the you know, the Zion's gates and kill her. You know, right there, we would know what to do. And the same with, you know, all the rest of the other stuff. So we need to be holy in all that we do. All right, gentlemen, do you guys have anything else that is related to this that you guys could put to this or to anything else? Uh, yeah, tonight we have our Youth for Yaw in Spanish. Yes, in Espanol. The boys will be doing it, so I know a lot of you guys that were speaking English right here, so it's not going to be yeah. interesting to if you. If you do speak Spanish, you want to join in, you can tell me join in. And if you know anybody at all that does speak Spanish and not English or both, and they want to hear the word of Yahuwah, we're going to be doing this in Proverbs, and then we're the boys are going to be taking it down, and we're going to be doing all of these same Torah commandments, but we're going to break it down into Spanish. And so um, it's going to be a great... Uh, ministry for Yah, and uh, you know, hopefully, there's folks out there who need to to learn this stuff, and we are happy to provide the time that we are able to do it. All right, gentlemen, anything else? Uh, read your Bibles. Um, have a great day. Yeah, have a great day. Have a great day. Be glor. Be happy. Be happy because you are alive. Because our Elohim has created you for a time such as this, and even though we are all going through trials and tribulations. Our, our creator knows this, and it's not like you're going through anything alone. You you have our creator, and I believe without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, I will tell you, I have 15,000% faith in our creator that he hears what we say, he helps us if it is his will, and he will guide us, and he will, he will bring the things necessary to keep us alive. I, I do not believe that we are on this road alone with this evil monster named Hasatan that just has full reign. I believe our creator will not let that happen unless it is his will. And he is a gracious, uh, wonderful creator. And I am happy to serve on his team. And we are honored to be uh, doing this, the, what we are doing right here. So with that, everybody, uh, much love to everybody out there. Huge hugs. And we will call this a day. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.